All right, hello everybody. Welcome to the Creators Lounge podcast. We are back, first episode of the year, and uh, today's guest I'm super excited to talk to. He comes from Morocco, but I will let him give his own introduction. My man, what is your name? Where are you from? What do you do? Uh, all right, uh, my name is uh, Issy uh, I'm from uh, I'm from Morocco, and uh, I make music in my free time. And, uh, that's about it. All right, man, that's awesome. And he makes some super cool music. Uh, a friend of mine showed me his music, and I've been a fan ever since. So I'm super excited to get into this today. Okay, so Hisham, let's start from the beginning. How did you get into music production? Uh, uh, back in uh. In 2013, uh, it was it was my birthday. Uh, I wanted to buy a, uh, I wanted to buy myself a uh, gift. Then uh, I found uh, a, a, a MIDI keyboard. Uh, I I was still uh, young, so I I thought it was piano because uh, I loved playing uh, piano when I was a little kid. So I bought it. I unboxed it and uh, I thought it was only a MIDI keyboard. I had to plug it in, uh, into an iPad. So, so I've, I've downloaded an app uh, for that. I, I plugged in uh, the keyboard and uh, I, that was my first time uh, experimenting the music production. Uh, so, so, what I was doing uh, first, uh, I was trying to remake some popular uh, music back at the time. I, I was uploading some uh, on YouTube, but uh, they were from an old channel and uh, they all deleted. So I got I got a few a few uh, tens of views of maybe hundreds. Yeah. I was kind of proud of that. It's pretty cool, it's a pretty great achievement, yeah. Especially for your first time, like first getting into music and uh, you're able to do that. And then real quick, uh, what age were you when you got that keyboard? Uh, it was 2013, so I think... Uh, I think I was 10. 10 years old, oh my gosh! <laughs> That's super cool! 10 years old, you get into music, and so basically, you've been doing music production for about six years now. Um, and if uh, I could five. ask, five years, okay, so about, yeah, five yeah. years then. Right, that's 15. super cool. Fifteen years old, you're pretty young to be, like, in this music production game, uh, hmm. but you're doing really great at it. Real quick for the audience, I want to ask you about uh, your stage name, uh, HCHM, if you could explain to us, like, what it means, where it comes from. Uh, it pretty much comes from uh, my real name, which is uh, Hisham, H-I-C-H-A-M. Uh, fun fact: uh, My old name was uh, my old name was uh, Hisham, and uh, the two last uh, digits of uh, my birth uh, year, zero three. So, what made you? Uh, it, it kind of, yeah, what, why did you change the name? I, I wanted to ask. Because uh, <laughs> it's sounding a bit uh, robotic, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Model number Hisham zero three. I want to change that. Uh, in 2016, I changed my name uh, officially to Asia. Very cool. Very cool. I think it's better. Right? Yeah, I think so. It is. It's it's kind of got an iconic look to it. Like when I see it written out, it's kind of like it's pretty iconic. And then uh, knowing that it's from your name, I like I like that a lot. Okay, so uh, from the start of your music journey, you were doing like remakes of popular songs, and then I know from your SoundCloud, you've also also done a lot of remixes of popular songs. What would yeah. you say that your uh, goal was for music production whenever you first started? What was the kind of the thing you wanted to do with music? Uh, at first, I just wanted to do it uh, for fun because uh, I. I I absolutely loved music, in general. So, I wanted to see what was uh, behind the popular uh, tracks I was uh, hearing. So what I was doing is uh, I, I look for a, a track, for example, and then I loop it. I try to hear every single sample, and I try to remake it. Oh, by the way, the first uh, software I was making a uh, music on uh, it only supported the uh, four. 
Wow, four tracks only. That's unbelievable. <laughs> and I had to record the, the whole track once. Record it on the piano. So if I made one little mistake at the end, I had to restart all of it. Oh my gosh, that's unbelievable, my man. So at what point did you it, finally it change? So, so long. Yeah, at what point did you finally change the the DAW you were working with, the music workstation? Uh, a few months later, uh, uh, I've looked at uh, the box, I look back to the, the box of uh, the MIDI keyboard, and I found out uh, it's for also a software called uh, GarageBand. So I downloaded it, and uh, yeah, it supports us, uh, up to 16 tracks instead of 4. But what I was doing, uh, at first what I was doing was uh, recording from the first the first app and then importing the, the audio to GarageBand. Well, I didn't really know how to use it. But then uh, in, uh, in 2016, I found out, uh, a YouTube channel called... Uh, now it's called uh, Arrived, but uh, he's... It's a it is a Swedish uh, music producer. Uh, his his old name and uh, his real name is uh, Arvid uh, Arvid Sandgren. He made uh, I just found his channel and uh, he made tons of uh, tutorials on GarageBand how to remake this song, how to remake this song. And then uh, that's pretty much how I learned uh, music production in general. Wow, that's really cool, dude. So you kind of if it's like a step by step process, yeah. Uh, at uh, my SoundCloud page, my very first upload uh, on SoundCloud, it's a remake, it's my own remake of uh, one of his uh, original tracks. So I wanted to remake uh, myself instead of uh, following his tutorials, I want to do that myself. I, I, I sent it to him and uh, I couldn't believe uh, he actually replied. That's really cool, he replied. What did he, what did he tell you? But, uh, you know, I did not... Uh, I don't know uh, how to mix, how to master, etc. So the the bass was uh, extremely loud. It was so so loud. This was uh, inaudible. So so then uh, then uh, the summer I, I started uh, remixing. Uh, I, w I was downloading uh, a capellas and trying to add uh, my own vibe. And uh, also, uh, in the same year, I discovered uh, Kaigo. Yeah, when I, when I heard uh, his stuff, I I fell I fell in love with the uh, orchestra. And then I checked out his SoundCloud. His very his very early remixes were uh, even better. It, it was so simple yet. Uh, it had a special uh, thing that uh, you can hear uh, anywhere. So that's where uh, I got uh, the inspiration from. Dude, that's super cool. I love that. Yeah. So you went from getting a keyboard and then finding out about GarageBand, finding someone who did GarageBand tutorials, and it just kind of mm -hmm. kept going step by step forward. Um, you mentioned at the start that you were making music just for fun. That was like your whole reason for doing it. Has that changed yeah. any, now that you've been doing music for five years, how do you kind of feel about music and like what's your goals for it now? Now music production uh, is starting to be like, uh, a bit further from uh, being fun because uh, it's uh, because now when I, now I make music on, uh, on PC, now it, it's a bit more complicated to finish the tracks compared to what, what I used to do. And uh, yeah, it, it takes a bit more time, so it takes uh, some hard work to, to finish the tracks and all that. But yeah, the, the but yeah, they sound uh, obviously they sound better, so that's what it is. Okay, yeah, I like that, man. I like that. So uh, one thing I do, I am curious about because you talked about getting into Kaigo, and of course Kaigo does house music. Also, a lot of your music is kind of like tropical house or in the house genre. Um, do you purposely make house music, or is there other genres that you want to kind of get into more? 
when I'm making uh, when I'm making music, uh, well, I, I, I just uh, in general I just make uh, stuff that uh, I like. I don't really care about uh, uh, it should be tropical or oh, uh, it should be progressive or whatever. If it sounds good, uh, that's uh, that's uh, the most important. I don't really care about that. Yeah. But yeah, in general, I make uh, tropical house because uh, that's that's one of my favorite genres uh, house. And then uh, I have plenty of progressive house uh, projects, even uh, even future house, a few future house probably. So I try to to experiment with the uh, different sounds. Maybe I can get uh, my own vibe. I like that, man. I like that. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Whenever I go in to make music, I'm never thinking about genre. I'm not thinking this will be trap, this will be dubstep. I'm just kind of making my own kind of vibe. So I, I really love that. Um, that being said, because you do do a lot of house music, what do you think about house as a genre? Do you feel like it's very limited, or do you feel like there's a lot of room for creativity uh, in a genre? That's that. Yeah, uh, house music is uh, composed uh, of a, an infinite list of uh, subgenres. There's tropical house, there's progressive house, there's future house, there are, there's future house, and and uh, much more. There, there's also trap. There's also etc. So uh, ha when you say house, uh, you have to specify a subgenre you're talking about. But in, ge in general, it's just uh, electronic music, in general, yeah. Sure, definitely. So it sounds like you don't feel very limited by genre. You're uh, just creating like your own vibe. You're just making the music that you want to make. And I think that's yeah. the important thing, uh, for sure. Um, <clears throat> is there any other kind of sounds or styles you want to branch into, uh, like on purpose? Like, would you purposely try to do like a dubstep track? Or would you purposely try to do like a hip hop track? Is there some like different sounds you want to explore? When when I make uh, music uh, in general, it, sometimes uh, I start off with, uh, for example, uh, a tropical house. Uh, the I don't really start off with uh, a genre. I start off with just uh, a melody and the chords ID, and then uh, I I add stuff, and then uh, it can be it can be either a tropical house. Progressive house sometimes, or even uh, or even uh, both. For example, tropical house and uh, trap. For example, with the with with the generator. So <laughs> what I've done is uh, I got I got just uh, an idea for a melody and uh, chords. I'll send it to him. It could be the, the melody and all that. Uh, it will sound great for a, a tropical house track. When I send it to generator. He made uh, a trap track that's uh, that sounds different, but uh, also good. When he sent it back to me, I I added obviously the the more uh, HCHM uh, samples and and all that. And then we and then we came back with uh, peace, the final track. Peace was a really, really good song. I really loved that collaboration, and I think that was the first uh, song of yours that I had ever heard before. And by the way, I think Shinrio is a really cool music producer. Uh, he's come on the podcast before. Uh, I'm good friends with him, and he just, he's just a great guy. He's got a lot of great uh, musical talent and, uh, and diversity in what he makes. How did you guys meet, by the way? Oh, it was, uh, it was on a, an Ed One uh, live stream. He asked me if uh, if I wanted to see a Marshmallow and Kaigo collab. I said yeah, and then uh, he he presented himself to me. He said that uh, he was Marshmallow style producer, and then uh, that's how uh, it all started. That's awesome. Yes, Generator is famous for being obsessed with uh, with Marshmallow, so I'm not surprised to hear that story. <laughs> All right, so HCH Sim, uh, we've just reached the end of 2018, and we're moving into 2019. Uh, I'm curious about last year. What were some of the, the highlight moments for you in 2018? The big moments for you in music? Uh, in 2018, 
uh, I, I uploaded my uh, my very first uh, original track uh, featuring uh, a vocalist. It's uh, it's Yu featuring uh, Hana. Uh, by the way, Hana is a uh, is a sister of uh, the guy who was making uh, Girls Band tutorials. Uh, and they, they were also making uh, original tracks together, and I was uh, remixing them since uh, back in uh, 2016. The first remix of uh, of, uh, of their work, yeah, it's uh, it's one called uh, the better part, and yeah, it's made a garage band, and uh, well, it was it was their first track, so I told myself, uh, yeah. It will, it will be awesome if I can remix uh, that one, so that's why I did. I, I, want, I really wanted to work uh, with, uh, with the guy, but uh, but for, for some reason he couldn't, so I decided to work with... Uh, yeah, I, I was looking for a vocalist, and then uh, I found the opportunity to work uh, with her. Dude, congratulations, by the way, that's really, really cool. Uh, the guy who kind of helped you get started. That, that's also the, the very first track to be released uh, on Spotify. Oh, wow. Congratulations. There was a very big track then. I mean, it's super cool to yeah. me that the person who helped you start making music and now you were able to collab with his sister. So it's, it's a pretty close connection right there. I think that's a really cool achievement. Uh, okay, so that, that having happened, we're now in 2019. What are some of the, the things you want to do this year? What are some of your your hopes for the year in terms of music? Uh, for this year, uh, I want to I want to upload uh, more, a bit more stuff than uh, previous years, and uh, slightly different, and uh, ho hopefully uh, a, a full album instead uh, instead of uh, an extended play like a. Uh, last year I got it man yeah and I think that's the important thing uh, same as you this year I'm really telling people to put out more content to make more music and put out more music the trouble is that a lot of artists uh, myself included don't do that like we only put out like a song every three months or something you know very rarely what is it for you that uh, holds you back from putting out more music. Like, why does why do you not put out more music? Yeah, I am. Uh, you know when people say uh, quality is better than uh, quality. Yeah, uh, that that's my logic uh, when uh, for for music in general. I I, I want to upload the uh, even when I finish uh, a project. I try to add uh, my, my final touches until it's uh, perfect and then it's ready to be uploaded. I, I don't... Uh, I never do something like uh, when I make a track in uh, one, two days and then uh, upload it just uh, because uh, it was a long time, for example. I'm, I'm, I'm always keeping uh, better stuff for uh, later. It's better than... Uh, stuff uh, with uh, less work behind it and uh, comes out uh, earlier. Alright, I get it man. So quality over quantity, but then the problem is that, you know, we still put out less music. So because you think quality over quantity, but you also want to put out more music, what's your plan to combine those things? Uh, after f uh, first uh, to to work uh, to have more more time on my computer making music a bit more time than the, than before so that uh, I, I can still get the same quality and the uh, and the, the track uh, gets finished uh, a bit earlier than uh, than usual. Sure, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good plan. I guess my question then would be. Um, how do you get more time to be on the computer, you know, because people do have a lot of responsibilities, whether it's school or family, uh, family stuff. So, like, what's your, what's your game plan for getting more time in to make music? How are you going to do that? Uh, right now it's not that easy because, uh, I have school, uh, every day except, uh, Sunday. It, it's not really easy to manage between, uh, school and, uh, 
and and mu and the art music production and the and the yeah. So what I want to do is uh, on my in my once I have uh, free time, I do my best to make uh, more music in that time. But yeah, school is always uh, a priority. Yeah. It really uh, is, dude. It really yeah, is. I, I understand that completely. Yeah. Whether it's school or whether it's work or even like a relationship, yeah. it, it does. That stuff needs to take priority a lot mm. of the times. Um, but you're still very dedicated to making music, which is exciting. So, what is your motivation to make music? Like, what drives you to be making music, even though you only have one day off a week? Like, what is it that makes you want to get in the studio and make a new song? Uh, uh, sometimes the reason uh, behind uh, why uh, I open up uh, my software and all that is, uh, it's m maybe because uh, we ha uh, I have uh, I have an, an idea for uh, for example uh, a diss track I wanted I want to change uh, th that part or even just uh, a new idea. You know, uh, directly I open up. I open up a uh, software and uh, I put uh, my ID, just like a uh, copy paste, and uh, and then I can work uh, on it later. And uh, and uh, what 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 motivates me uh, is uh, also the fact that uh, I I love music since I was a very little kid. I can't live. I can't live one single day without listening to music. Dude, I love that. I love that. It's the same for me, definitely, definitely. And I like what you said, by the way. Um, how you said that sometimes you'll just open your software just to put down a small idea, and then later you can finish it or you can work on it more. I think that's something that's really, really important because consistency is a big way to win. You know, long term. So same as you, like I, I make I make music, you know, even if it's just like five minutes, like I'll make I'll make something, and then later, like a month later, maybe a year later, I can go back and say, oh, I like that, you know, I can finish up the song uh, that way. Um, how often do you go back to old project files and finish them up? Have you done that before? Uh, pr pretty much uh, every time I don't uh, have uh, any ideas for uh, new tracks. Uh, th th so that's what I'm doing. I keep uh, coming back to to older ideas and uh, and try to to approach them to to being uh, final products. You know, even though they sound uh, kind of great and they're ready to be uploaded uh, on stream platforms, etc., etc., I I always try to to finish it. I always tell myself. Uh, it isn't uh, enough. So that's what I keep doing uh, almost uh, every time I open up. Uh... No, it's not true. I got you, man. I got you. Yeah. How interesting. Uh, well, like you said, though, you have a quality over quantity mindset. So it makes sense that you'd be really analyzing your music and saying, you're like, oh, I need to fix this. I need to fix this. Uh, do you think that's a bad thing, or do you think that's an okay thing? That sort of like perfectionism, I guess you could call it. Uh, uh, I, I I always see that uh, professionalism is a, a a great thing in general. So, uh, for example, when uh, for example when uh, I upload a track, and then. I, I upload it, it's public and uh, it, sh it should be finished. But when I listen to it, I can still, I can still, uh, for example, uh, tell myself, ah, oh, I should have done that, I should have done that. So, so that's what I do to not get uh, into that uh, situation. Sure, man, definitely, yeah. <clears throat> I think that uh, perfectionism can be a good thing um, because it means that your quality can very, be very high. But I do worry sometimes about it limiting people, because perfectionism can lead to like self-criticism or self-hate, you know, which can you know kind of limit uh, how much you create. But it is interesting to hear different perspectives on on that. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about a little bit uh, 
Hisham is about your generation of music creators. So you yourself, I believe, are 15 years old, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. uh, other guys like you, Generator, is like 13, and there's a whole lot of other artists that are uh, like around anywhere from 13 to 16 years old, which is relatively young uh, compared to people such as Skrillex, you know, or or Martin Garrix, who are in like 20s or, or 30s. Um, <clears throat> how do you feel about this new wave of producers that are starting out so young? What are your thoughts on, on your generation of music producers? Now in, the, in this uh, generation, uh, it's, it's so much easier to, to get started with uh, music production. You know, there are t tutorials on YouTube, there are web websites to, to tell you how to do that, how to do that. Yeah, but, uh, now we have uh, we have internet, we have uh, YouTube, we have uh, all these kind of websites. So now it's more fun and uh, easier to to learn about music production. Definitely, man. Definitely. Um, which is basically what you did as well. You know, you just utilize the internet to improve your skills and and put in the hard work on yeah. that. Um, so what I want to ask you about next is what uh, producers from your kind of generation, the younger producers, which ones do you see as being really talented or really promising for the future? I know quite a few, uh, a few very talented uh, artists, uh, especially on the on SoundCloud. Yeah, th th there's uh, a lot, a lot of. Uh, Great artists. Sure, and if you will give us like names, uh, give us like your top three, maybe your top five of your your favorite uh, favorite up and coming producers, the ones who aren't famous yet. Uh, first of all, there, there's uh, obviously uh, Generator. <laughs> he makes kind of great stuff, and uh, you know he started off uh, with the uh, marshmallow style. Now he's making slightly different, but still uh, even better. Uh, right. And then uh, th there's also uh, uh, there. There are also some friends uh, who make uh, who make uh, also tropical house and all that. Uh, th th there's one guy called. Uh, Freelander, uh, yeah, which I found uh, very great, and uh, you know, it, it's while it's still tropical house, uh, it, it's still slightly different, and uh, I really like that uh, difference. Uh, there's also uh, another guy who started off uh, with the Garage Band too, who was following also the tutorials from uh, from the from Arvid. Uh, his name is uh, Marvidis. He also started off uh, on GarageBand and now he's making music uh, on FL Studio, just like him. He, 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 now he makes... Uh, I can't really tell the, the genre uh, and that's, uh, that's why I uh, like it. Uh, because uh, it's something uh, you've never heard before, it's uh, like uh, his own uh, genre. If you have listened to his uh, last tracks, uh, you you won't tell to yourself, uh, oh, it sounds like the, this artist. It sounds like uh, him. It sounds like uh, him. And, and there's an endless uh, list of uh, of artists that uh, I really admire. Awesome, man! I love that list. That's some those are some great artists you listed. Um, and so, those being some of your favorite artists, are you gonna collab with those guys this year? Uh, I'm open. Uh, I'm currently open uh, to God, and uh, I'm especially looking for a vocalist also, not only a producer, because uh, I don't just want to make uh, instrumentals, instrumentals. Uh, I I want uh, to include the vocals because uh, it will make it sound uh, different, and uh, that, that's what I try to done uh, uh, to do in uh, 2018. Uh, in, in my in my latest uh, my my first uh, extended play, it's called uh, Heavens. Yeah, I, I featured uh, two vocalists, one uh, one called uh, 
Cage, uh, I made a, a, an original track uh, with him and also a remix of uh, one of his uh, original tracks. And by the way, uh, my my first my first upload uh, of music made uh, on PC was a remix of uh, of Cage. Okay. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Very very cool. Yeah. There's uh, uh, another uh, another vocalist, a female vocalist. Is uh, she, she's called the. Uh, yeah, uh, I made the I made the track uh, on the, the EP. It's called uh, it's called Goodbye. I really enjoyed working on that one. Also, I tried to make sound different too. And uh, yeah, I loved working uh, with uh, with them. And this year, I'm I'm looking forward to work uh, with even more vocals. So you can expect more uh, original tracks featuring featuring. Love it, dude. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's ex it's exciting, man. I've heard some of your stuff with vocals. It sounds great, and um, there's so much. I think that that tropical house mixed with vocals is just it's it's so much fun to listen to. Um, one thing I like to listen to is like remixes, tropical house remixes of of uh, hmm. old hip hop songs like Tupac or, or Biggie, and those are really cool to me. Like Matoma, hmm. I'm not sure if you know him, but Matoma is one of my I know, favorites. I know. Yeah, he's great, dude. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, best of luck on that. Uh, one last thing, because we talked about like your generation of, of producers, I wanted to ask you, um, do you have any advice or critique for other producers who are your age? Um, it could be mistakes you see them making, or it could just be stuff that helped you. But yeah, what is some advice you would give to other creators who are like younger, like around 13 to 16 years old? What would you say to them? Uh, if they have uh, a favorite artist, for, ex for example, for me, Kaigo, uh, they can uh, they can actually try to remake the the tracks of uh, the guy uh, of the of, for example, for me, for me, Kaigo. Uh, I I spent I spent uh, a lot of time re remaking his own tracks, and that's also how I learned. A little part of uh, how I learned uh, a little bit how he was making music, how uh, what was his logic in uh, in producing. And yeah, they, they, they can uh, try to remake uh, the, their favorite uh, artists' uh, tracks. Yeah, they can learn a lot, a lot from that. Mm, that's a really good tip, man. That's a really great tip. And uh, I am curious, real quick, about your like your learning process or how you like understand things because you mentioned already about uh, remaking tracks and listening to them a lot and then also uh, like the woke you put into it so like how do you learn like new skills whenever it comes to music production what's your process for learning something new about music when I was making uh, music on, uh, on GarageBand when I started off, uh, I didn't know, obviously I didn't know anything, I was completely lost. Uh, so I was importing samples from uh, the old, older software and uh, stacking them so I could have the uh, And then I started discovering uh, some functions that I, I've never heard about, for example, uh, equalizer, compression, limiting, and, uh, and all that stuff. So. You know, for for these uh, things, you, you can look up uh, on the internet w w uh, what's their purpose uh, on the track, on, on music. Uh, what? So that's uh, that's how I learn uh, for myself, and also things like equalizer and uh, all that. Uh, I also learned uh, that from. Uh, from the guy who was uh, making uh, tutorials on Caravan. Awesome, and I like it. So don't be afraid to to ask questions. Then admit that you yeah. don't know stuff, and then just keep your eyes open to keep looking for it. I like that. I, th I think that's really important. It's too easy for a lot of us to um, to be trapped in like our own game where we we don't want to admit that we don't know this, you know, or that we need to get better. It's too easy to, to just ignore everything. Sometimes it's important to, to admit, like, I don't know what I'm doing, 
you know, and then find it online or ask someone else for help. So that's fabulous advice. Thank you for that. For the audience listening, because a lot of people who listen to the podcast, they're trying to chase their own dreams and they're trying to um, achieve success at like what they do, whether that's music or maybe it's art or something like that. <clears throat> um, for you, Hisham, what are some tips for the audience on things that they should do whenever they're chasing their dreams and things they should not do whenever they're chasing their dreams? If you could give me like one of each, that would be awesome. Yeah, for people who want to achieve uh, achieve their dreams, uh, first of all, they they need to get uh, motivation for, for achieving the dreams. So, if they don't have motivation, uh, sometimes uh, they wouldn't even want uh, to achieve the dream. And uh, and also, the they need to. To, to believe in uh, themselves, to, to, to tell themselves that uh, they can do it, they can do it, they can do it, until uh, they finally wish uh, it's right. Love it, man. Love it. And by the way, real quick, um, where can people find that motivation? It can be hard, uh, I, I feel like, to find positivity sources, right? So for you, what are some, like, where are some places that you find motivation, things that, that inspire you? Where do you find that at? Uh, as I said, uh, when I'm making music, uh, I always feel uh, that I rarely feel uh, bored when uh, making music because uh, it was kind of uh, my my own dream. It, it, it was kind of a dream I've never asked uh, asked for, but uh, a dream that now uh, I'm uh, I'm currently achieving. Because uh, when I started producing, uh, I always. Uh, I always love to see what was behind, what was pro- the process behind music, and uh, yeah, um, I think um, my love for music is uh, my main uh, motivation. I like it, man. Yeah, internal motivation is definitely the best. So if you can find out in your heart, like what it is that you care about, what you're passionate about. That's a great way to stay motivated, for sure. And then real quick, because you talked to the audience about stuff that they should do, what is something you would tell them not to do whenever they're trying to uh, achieve their dreams? People should never uh, should never think that uh, something is uh, impossible to happen. Uh, yeah, because uh, here's a quick example. Uh, at first, when I, I was trying to remake uh, Kygo tracks. There are there are a lot of presets that uh, I still didn't know about. I thought it, it would ca- it would take countless uh, hours to, to try to remake them. And now uh, now uh, on uh, on my computer now it's uh, it became so 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 easy to to find them. Yeah, you, you know I I can even make uh, a track and. Uh, Purposely call it Skygo and everyone would uh, believe it. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, like you said, never believe something is impossible. I mean, it's so important to have that belief yeah. because if you believe it, then you can actually find it. You can actually do it. It's whenever you tell yeah. yourself that it doesn't exist that you stop looking and you never achieve it. So that's really, really powerful. But before we wrap up, I was curious, um, uh, Hisham, about... How often uh, do you make music? Are you making music like every single day, or do you only uh, make it when you have time for it? Uh, I make it uh, almost. Uh, I make music almost e- every day. The the uh, it, uh, I make it often uh, the night when I come back uh, from school, and sometimes when I have time between morning and afternoon uh, when we have school. Sometimes I take the opportunity to pull on, pull on my computer and open software and try to get some imagination and uh, trying to finish up uh, some tracks. Cool, man, for sure. And actually, real quick, uh, I know that a lot of people who do listen to the podcast, they are also like you, they're in school. Is it difficult for you to balance school life and music? in terms of like mentally so like being at school where there's a lot of kids and maybe a lot of drama is it difficult for you to disconnect from that and make music uh, i i find it pretty uh, pretty easy to manage between uh between school and music because uh 
because uh, for, for me the, there are two very s separate uh, things like for example uh, but, but but sometimes when uh, when I'm at school uh, I can get some uh, ideas for uh, for music well yeah that's uh, I think that's the only common uh, points between uh, school and uh, and uh, music. Even even when uh, when I'm home, uh, for, for example, when I have uh, when I have a, a homework, uh, that's the only thing I do. When I, when I finish up uh, that, then I I, uh, I come back to music. Makes sense, dude. Makes sense. Do your friends support your uh, support your music? Do your friends at school do they think it's cool? Yeah, there there are some friends who who know about uh, my YouTube channel. Yeah, the 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 quite uh, supportive. Uh, yeah. Cool. Good. I think it's I think it's important, yeah, to have like a support group, people who encourage you. So uh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I have heard other situations where uh, kids at school didn't like like the producer's music, and so they had to deal with that kind of like the like bullying at school, basically, and then go home and make music. And so uh, I was curious about your situation, but I'm very glad that it's it's different for you. All right, uh, Hisham, as we move into the, the, the last round I always do, last bit of questions, it's just a, like a speed round, basically. So just I'll give you a fast question, and you give me a fast answer. Ready to go? Okay. All right, man, let's go. Yeah. Three, two, one. What is your favorite color? Uh, blue. What is your favorite food? Uh, pizza. What is your favorite movie? Mm, uh, Fast and Furious, I think. What is your favorite song right now? Um, uh, Happy Now by uh, by Kaigo and uh, Sandro Cavazza. What languages do you speak? I speak uh, Arabic, French, and uh, English. What countries do you want to visit? Uh, uh, America, Europe, and uh, maybe some, maybe some Asian countries like uh, Japan, South Korea. Awesome. And the last question: What is something you want to do that you have never done before? Well, hopefully, I, uh, I can actually uh, uh, profit off uh, my music. Because now uh, when when I'm making music, um, I literally want uh, zero cents uh, from uh, from any of my music. So I'm trying uh, for the future to to profit uh, of that. That'd be awesome, man. That'd be awesome. All right, dude. Hisham, thank you so much for coming on today, man. It was it was a great episode. I love your thoughts. I love yeah. your attitude, and I really love your music so this year i uh, dude please make more music and release more music and you know i'm going to listen to it i'm going to share it with all of my friends uh real quick before we go is there any last words you want to say to the people who are listening to the podcast any final message i only have two words uh stay tuned all right because, dude uh, I, I have some stuff some stuff ready May maybe even this month i could uh, upload uh, something I was ready for uh, what I want. Woo, let's so, go, man. Stay tuned. Stay tuned at that. I'm excited. Everybody stay tuned. Keep an eye on his page. H-C-H-M. This is the man to be listening to. He's got some super cool music. He, uh, he does a lot of house music, but we never know what he's going to do next. So please keep an eye on his music. Support him. Send him some love. And that is it for today's episode. Thank you for watching, and have a fantastic day. 2019 everybody i will see you next time goodbye <laughs>